We are getting near the end, Marquette. Almost the end of ME 180. Tragic, I know. Over the past week, Marquette hired their new basketball coach, and shockingly, he was an absolute wild card pick, at least in my book. Who would have thought that Marquette would hire the guy with the most experience and who has worked under a coach who has won two national championships in the last 10 years? I tell you, you just never know who's going to get the job these days. Obama, am I right? Let's get tonight rolling as we are previously recorded from Milwaukee. Well, as of tonight, April 7th, March Madness finally comes to a close. I always wondered how March Madness could happen in April, but apparently no one seems for this to be an issue. Why don't we call it Maple Madness? It makes so much more sense. And is it really madness that goes on with the tournament? Because it seems to me like it is more like downright anger that occurs every year when millions of people fill out their brackets. It's more like, why can't the number one seed beat the number seven seed? You aren't a number one because you can't beat a number seven. You are an imposter. Imposter! Tonight in the finals features eighth seeded Kentucky and seventh seeded Connecticut. Bet you didn't have that picked. Don't give me this crap that, oh yeah, I totally picked that. The real question is, how did you not see it? Out of the millions of brackets submitted on Yahoo Sports, only 486 of them picked the correct finale. So, basically, no one yet, somehow, it always seems like 486 people are right be around me because everyone seems so happy with their brackets around me. All 486 of them are, are my friends. So since the finale was picked by so few people, we are now going to move on to a little segment I like to call things that have better odds than picking the correct final of the March Madness Basketball Tournament. Milwaukee has better odds of being in the 70s next week than you do of picking the correct final of March Madness. North Korea has better odds of being named the friendliest country in the world than you do of picking the correct finals of March Madness. Nickelback has better odds of winning the Grammy of, for Album of the Year four years in a row than you do of picking the correct final of March Madness. Sears has better odds of staying in business for decades to come with a successful business plan than you do of picking the correct finals of March Madness. Kesha has a better chance of winning a Nobel Peace Prize for her inspirational lyrics and songs than you do of picking the correct finals of March Madness. Pitbull has a better chance of rapping an entire song in English than you do of picking the correct finals of March Madness. Justin Bieber has a better chance of having a music career in his 40s than you do of picking a correct finals of March Madness. This show has a better chance of having millions of views on YouTube than you do of picking the correct finals of March Madness. CNN has a better chance of going a whole hour without mentioning the lost Malaysian Airlines plane than you do of picking the correct finals of March Madness. Marquette Basketball has a better chance of winning the tournament for the next 14 years in a row than you do of picking the correct finals of March Madness. And finally, Nickelodeon Junior has a better chance of showing pornography in the morning on air than you do of pick right, picking the correct finals of March Madness. Honestly, I'm thrilled this stupid tournament is over, and I can assure you I will not be tuning in to watch the game tonight. Speaking of tuning in to watch the game, have you heard what time the game is at? Well, if you live in Eastern Standard Time, which I know we don't, but I'm going to sympathize with them for a bit, then the game does not even start until after 9 p.m. tonight. Yep, CBS basically said they want to make sure that any basketball fans have to wake up all groggy tomorrow. Can you imagine how many students are going to class tomorrow at UConn or Kentucky? If their team wins, the students will all be too hungover to wake up and go to class. If their team loses, the students would rather sleep away their sorrows and massive hangovers from sadness drinking and not go to class either. If I were president of either of those schools, I would just cancel class because you know either way, no one's going to show up. So why make the teachers show up? And we now move on to the Marquette 3, where each week we count down the top three answers to a question about Marquette. This week's question, what went wrong this season for Marquette basketball? 
causing them to miss the NCAA tournament and the NIT tournament. And number three, whenever the team asked Buzz Williams what game plan they should use for the next game, he always responded, I don't care, I'm leaving for an even suckier team than you at the end of the year. At number two, Marquette basketball plays at the Bradley Center, and only teams that don't make it to the playoffs are allowed to play there. And the number one reason for what went wrong with Marquette basketball this season is that Buzz Williams promised the team Wendy's every time they won a game, but he really should have promised KFC. And after the break, we'll have Dan from wherever he is in this week and Brian continuing about sports like I did, but failing miserably compared to me. Stay tuned. <laughs> and we're back to more MU 80 with what was once weather, but apparently it's just Dan, <laughs> you and Dan. So here is Dan. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Around the World with Dan with, like, as if. Me! I hope you're like so totally ready for news about weather, but first, I have to tell you about Becky and Tommy. Like, seriously. So Becky and Tommy were in the same Western Civ class last Thursday, and Tommy like sat behind Becky, and Becky was like, hey, Tommy. And, one, and Tommy was like, oh, hey. And Becky was all like, what's up? And Tommy was all like, nothing. Continued coverage of this event will not stop until we've deciphered the meaning of nothing. I bet he's doing nothing with that slut, Trish. Like, seriously, Trish? Ah, I can't even with her. One time, Trish told me that Joan told Tommy that Jesse talked to Casey about this one time Johnny and Rachel made out, but Tommy didn't even, like, care. Even though he'd, he and Rachel totally used to date, but not really, they were just talking. But they totally hooked up, like, everywhere. This floor is still sticky. In other news, ew. Back on track, spring has, like, so totally sprung. You know what that means. Wardrobe change. First things, guys, seriously, work on your calves if you're going to be wearing shorts. Nothing gets a girl like a good pair of Achilles tendons. Side note to douchebags with calf tattoos. Nobody really cares, so you can stop pretending like everyone's looking. Ladies, as the weather warms up, it's time to jump into my favorite season of seasons, sundress season. I just love sundresses. They're fun and flirty, and the smell doesn't get trapped when you fart, unlike those big puffy coats. I mean, they breathe. My favorite are like the super cute floral patterns with the little pockets in front. The best part about sundresses, though, is watching the guys go crazy. Just remember how short is too short. You don't want anyone thinking you spell your name Kelly with an I but no E, because that's just slutty. Well, thanks for tuning in this week. Maybe next week you'll get to see me in a sundress. Until next time, remember to stay cool and fight those tan lines. Oh, what I would do. Oh, what I would do to see Dan in a sundress. Here's Brian with our sports report. Oh, that Danielle girl, she sure was pretty. On the other side, though, Marquette's named a new head coach, Steve Wojciechowski. How do I know that? It's because I'm a Pollock, too. You know, it should be exciting to see him on the sidelines and what he has to offer. I like that he changed his Twitter picture to him and Dwayne Wade, though. That's a huge power move right there. And I already like him already, and I think Marquette will, too. He's already coached Derrick Rose, D. Wade, and LeBron in the Olympics. Buzz can't say that for shit. And he also coached under Coach K. And it's hard to beat that. Let's hope that he can bring his Blue Devil success to Marquette. Marquette, wow, I didn't say that right. Speaking of college basketball, the national championship is tonight in a matchup that everyone predicted. And as in everyone, I mean nobody. Seven seed UConn will be taking on eight seeded Kentucky. Normally, if you saw this matchup, you wouldn't really be surprised. But a 7 and 8 seed playing for a national championship? Kind of ridiculous. The last time we'll see that low one was in 1985. None of us were even alive back then. That's what makes college basketball so unpredictable. Basketball, NBA basketball, and hockey are almost done with their season, so I don't really want to talk about them until the playoffs start. The first weekend of baseball happened. Oh, man. First week of baseball happened. It's in the books. And my beloved Cubs are awesome, two and four. 
The taking's already begun. They've been, they're been about to celebrate their 100 years of Wrigley Field, which has got me thinking, they've never even won a World Series since that stadium opened, which is pretty embarrassing. But hey, win or lose, I still booze. I'll be making my way to Miller Park to watch Hank the Dog take on the Pirates this weekend because of Hank, the Brewers are 4-2 and two and had a three-game sweep over the defending champs, the Boston Red Sox. Hank is currently leading the league with six home runs and has pitched two perfect games. He's a diamond in the rough, and he's so cute. That's it for sports. I'll back to you, Mr. Zach, big guy. I know you're hanging out there having a grand old time by yourself, waiting for me to be done because I love you. Love your glasses, love your tie, love everything about you. Such a cute guy. That Danielle girl, I want you to get me her number because she, that girl, she got a donk. I've never seen, I don't know if she's from the south, she's from the north, she essentially came from heaven. Like, what's going on with this show? Okay, well, thanks for that, Brian. When we come back, the social report with Sharon, a public service announcement, and an update in some international news. Stay with us, Marquette. I don't care. I always, I keep telling you, I want a camera over here. No, I'm just gonna read the news over here. I'm gonna look this way. I don't care. You know, Sharon's in the other studio, which we just acquired, and here she is with the social report. Hello everyone. Once I searched Marquette University is famous for on Google, I found two interesting things. The first one is that 36 NBA and ABA players attended Marquette University. And the second one is Danny Pudi, the actor of a bat in community, also studied in Marquette. Oh, is today's topic basketball? In order not to be away from our topic, I should find the relationship between Danny Pudi and Marquette Basketball. Here is what he said on Marquette Magazines. Let me check. Okay. Marquette, a lot of the performance I did wasn't on the stage. I was always at every basketball game. I love getting on the jumbophone. I think I have the record for most times on the jumbophone at Marquette Games at the Brady Center. I'm a huge, huge sports fan, and Marquette basketball is my number one thing. That's what he said. When we talk about basketball, we won't ignore cheering scored, which is a tradition of basketball. Do you know the primary color of Marquette cheering scored? Please take several minutes to think about it, and the answer will be given to you later. Golden Eagle Squad is an important part of the Blue and Gold family. They create enthusiasm, school spirit, and loyalty to the Golden Eagles. I felt so happy when I watched them yelling, We are my cat on the NCAA tournaments on TV. They spread and multiple the happiness to the audience. I really appreciate that. Market cheering squad has been accompanying Marquette's basketball team for a long time. Day back to the history, Marquette Cheering Scott had good reputation. There was a report named a cheer for Marquette by Patri Patricia Wolvers on the Milwaukee Journal on March 12, 1976. Let's review what the report said. They are entertainers who practice with stopwatch. The 17 members of the Marquette University cheerleading squad are not just young kids, they are tumblers acrobats and dancers. They bounce onto the court during timeout periods and put on a flashly 45 second show. Have you found the answer now? Well, the primary color is black while the gold is the secondary color. Hope you enjoy my cat basketball game. Well, we are back at the desk. Here is Dan. And uh, um, actually it's pronounced Danielle. Okay, and uh, for this last little portion of the show, I'm gonna give you an update about everything going on in the world, including a little thing that seems to be forgotten about here, Crimea. So 
Danielle yeah. is going to explain things. So, like, what happened is that in, like, Ukraine, there's this, like, whole thing about whether they want to be, like, more European or, like, more Russian because, like, that's a huge deal to them. Because, so, they had this vote about their economic ties, which is really important because... I have a tie. Yes, because the... Vladimir Putin's attempt to start a Eurasian economic union is really putting a lot of stress on the European economic union, which Ukraine is currently in between deciding whether or not they want to pledge their loyalties to one or the other. Now, there was a vote, and they voted to become part of the EU. And then the, the prime minister was just like, I don't think so. So he just decided to like be friends with Russia instead. It was kind of like that one time when Becky and Trish were like, seriously? <laughs> We just need to like chill. Okay. How I this is, I, do, doing good so far, but yeah. like I don't understand how everything that you like everything you report on has to relate back to the, the slut Trish. Well, like it's really complicated unless you understand how big of a slut Trish is. <laughs> like seriously, like she's I can't even. I've lost my ability to even. To even? To I just, even? I just can't. To even? No? No? So, just, have you so what happened in Crimea so, okay. is, doing good. is that, like, there's a bunch of people in this region that are all ethnically Russian. Now, what that means is that they used to be Russian, and then somebody told them that they weren't anymore. That's rude. Right after World War II. So rude. So, when they were, like, trying to figure everything out, this became part of Ukraine. Now, these people, according to Vladimir Putin, should be Russian. Now, what's really important about Crimea is that there's access to the sea. To the sea. Which sea? The Black Sea, I the think. The black one. Or, like, the gray one. It's something in the monochromatic the scale. One, it's pretty much just, like, all the oceans. Yeah. Pollution. So they wanted access to the sea, and they have to go through Crimea because they can't go north. Now, Ukraine shares the border with Poland. Now, if you don't know... Poland's kind of gotten in trouble the last couple world wars, um, whereas they were just totally stepped on. I mean, Hitler <clears throat> came in there and was just like, bam, bam. He was Took not it. very nice to them. Just saying. So when Ukraine, who's upset with Russia for, like, you know, ignoring their sovereign borders or, like, whatever, hashtag over it, the Polish are going to be like, hey, we should declare war, too, because we share a border. Now... When they declare war, that's when it's going to become a world conflict. Because as I said, the last two world wars, um, the people that would be Polish after World War I when it was formed, and the people who were Polish in World War II, they just they took it real hard. And NATO is not going to let NATO? that happen again. NATO? The, I, uh, the North the Atlantic. last name was NATO. Yeah, it's probably not related. So NATO's just not going to let that maybe happen to like Poland again. Their, maybe like his dad. Like Can I finish? Please, can I finish? So NATO's going to go Over to war it. and try and stop Russia. And if they can stop Russia, this is all not. This is all going to take place in like a very short amount of time, because Russia is just. They're going to get a little uppity, kind of like the way Becky did with Trish, and <laughs> and Trish, who's NATO, is going to come back the way that Trish did against Becky and totally just like steal her boyfriend Zach. Now, different Zach. Sure. Cuter in the face. Now, hey, stop it. Have you even been on camera before? <laughs> Only once. Um, before the show, there was a black couch in the room, and the guy was like, no, I swear to God, nobody's going to see this. And then, seriously, it was on the internet, like, two weeks later. <laughs> and, like, I didn't even know. It was like, I just wanted a job. And, like, I was new, <laughs> and I'm really glad that I found a job here. Let's just say that. <laughs> These cameras are so much nicer than that one. <laughs> so, when NATO declares war, the United States is going to be like, nah, -uh, I don't want to have any part of that. Like me, you, d between that whole like Becky Trish debacle, which was like seriously a huge problem. So, the whole thing is going to like come down to whether or not like other communist nations want to get involved with Russia, which is not technically a communist nation, but it has been downgraded to a semi-authoritarian society. I just feel like Poland always just comes in and just like. Bam, we die. So, well, is yeah. Is it really they that helpful for them to get involved a, in this? Can I, like, seriously, can I finish? I mean, it's pretty much just like whatever side Poland's on, they're gonna lose. Well, 
It's not so much that. It's more whichever side Poland is on is going to be handcuffed to a corpse. They're not necessarily going to lose. Handcuffed to a corpse. Yeah. Like a corpse that's about to happen or a corpse that's you know, already a corpse. Like, oh, here, let me go dig up a grave and I'm going to well, handcuff you to a I mean, I, How can you even handcuff someone to a bone? It would just like slip right off. Well, you yeah. ever thought about so that before? So that's probably why I didn't say I bet, skeleton. But Trish would know that. <laughs> Trish doesn't know anything. She's stupid. She's such a bitch. Like seriously, one time in Western Civ class, she was like, um, when did Christopher Columbus sail? And I was like, obviously it was 1992, right after the season premiere of Dawson's Creek. Come on, seriously. Duh. Seriously. Everybody knows that. No, you're so wrong. You're so wrong. You're no better than Trish. No, you are no I'm better so than better than Trish. Trish because I totally did not steal anyone's boyfriend. Doubt it. Well, it was just this one time. This New Year's Eve. Was it a boyfriend I, or a husband? I am not technically home a home wrecker. wrecker. They home lived in an apartment. Wrecker. It was not a home. home. Wrecker. It was an apartment. There you have it. Stop it. Danielle <laughs> equals home wrecker. That's all the time that we have on here tonight. Can you not? Tune in next week <laughs> just seriously. for our season finale of MU180. Where we answer important questions like, do people actually watch this show? Will Tommy and Becky get back together? Or will it all end in tragedy? Will I get the show back to myself, or will I sob uncontrollably and have to squeeze my stress balls underneath the desk? You'll find out next time.